There's a good chance you have PCOS if you have any two out of these five conditions and if you're a young woman. Condition number one, irregular menstrual periods or none at all. Condition number two, infertility, which means the inability to become pregnant. Number three, hirsutism, which is the medical name for hair growing in places where it's not supposed to grow for a young woman. Um, number four, thinning of hair on the head, um, more in a male pattern baldness type situation. And then number five, uh, really oily skin and severe acne. My name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon in San Antonio, and a lot of the patients I see are affected with this condition. It's abbreviated PCOS, and the full name is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I get involved because there's a very strong correlation between PCOS and the obesity disease and diabetes. Researchers are uncertain if PCOS causes diabetes and weight problems or if there's some combination of weight and diabetes or insulin resistance that causes the PCOS instead. I think that the um, underlying dynamic represented by this diagram where insulin resistance leads to excess weight leads to PCOS and then back to more insulin resistance is a pretty accurate representation of the situation. Now, as I mentioned, as a bariatric surgeon, I see a lot of young women who have PCOS and they bring kind of two large concerns to me as it relates to the PCOS. The first thing is that PCOS interferes with fertility and these are young women who often otherwise have good, normal, productive lives. They want to have families and the PCOS is interfering with their becoming pregnant. The other thing that bothers women very often is the abnormal hair distribution, the growth where it shouldn't be, or the loss of hair uh, where they'd like it to be. And regarding these two overall concerns, I have kind of good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is that the fertility issues are very often improved with full treatment of the PCOS as well as the obesity condition. Um, the bad news is that the hair growth changes, we kind of have a modest impact on that. We can stop the abnormal changes from continuing to progress, but the ability of um, hormonal correction to fully reverse these changes it's limited. And so this, is, this brings me around to uh, wanting to propose a sense of urgency about PCOS when it's diagnosed, recognizing that some of the changes, especially the hair changes and the skin changes, may be irreversible. Going back to the fertility side of the PCOS equation, most often young women who meet me and are thinking about bariatric surgery have already been through extensive evaluation and treatment with the fertility specialist. The fertility specialist typically will begin by checking out the woman's reproductive anatomy. This is talking about the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and the uterus. Um, by the way, ultrasound of the ovaries might show multiple cysts, which is where polycystic ovarian syndrome gets its name. Um, the fertility specialist is also going to look at the woman's reproductive hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone balance, and all those things. And very often those are abnormal, although they're difficult to correct. The next step in treatment um, isn't to jump right to bariatric surgery. The next step in treatment is to work on lifestyle to get the PCOS and the other conditions, the insulin resistance, the excess weight, to get those under control. And so lifestyle is the same stuff that you would do to treat the obesity disease, which is to go on a low carbohydrate diet, um, to reduce your chemicals, which is sweeteners and preservatives, and to start exercise. And absolutely, these are good foundational things to do, but lifestyle alone is usually not impactful enough for a woman to um, achieve sustained benefits on the obesity disease and resolution of the PCOS or to become fertile and have a baby. And so the next step um, very often is medication if lifestyle alone isn't sufficient. And um, until recently, there weren't very good medicines available, but there's a new generation of medicines, um, Ozempic and Manjaro and Wegovy are examples that um, treat mainly diabetes and the obesity disease, which of course these things go with PCOS, and by treating these diseases, they help the PCOS also. Here again, the medicines are a great building block, but they alone are um, in concert with lifestyle are often not effective enough for many women. And after these meds have been used, which I strongly support, um, surgery can be appropriate. Now, when I meet women, we're talking about sleeve gastrectomy, we're talking about gastric bypass to help treat the obesity disease, the diabetes if it's present, 
the insulin resistance, which certainly is present, and the polycystic ovarian syndrome. And as I mentioned, we're very successful in helping women achieve fertility, less so with the hair growth and the hair loss. Um, so on the fertility piece, the story is great. I have, um, in my own practice, between 100 and and 135 healthy babies born to my own patients who have been through surgery and have had healthy babies. That's one of the most fun things that we do. And by the way, I've created a whole other video on pregnancy after bariatric surgery. In case you're interested, just go search for that. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you and I want you to know that if you're a woman suffering from polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, um, your bariatric team has a spectrum of treatment plans available for you ranging from lifestyle into medicines and into surgery and the odds are excellent. Thanks for watching.